All right, so now that I've got the shifter mechanism removed, the next thing I'm going to tackle is the electrical. So the first thing I'm going to do is the reverse light. Now the wiring for that between the automatic and manual is just slightly different of where the switches are. If we look here in the uh, shop manual, you'll see without electronic gear shift, which is a manual, and then with electronic gear shift. and it's a switch in either one. They take both the same wire set, you can see. So we're looking for a green, white, and blue, yellow. The switch in the automatic is integrated into the shifter mechanism. The switch on the manual is an actual switch integrated into the uh, transmission case itself. If you are lucky enough to pull your transmission from a salvage unit, you can go ahead and cut the wire that goes up into the harness and you can repurpose that. Uh, that way it'll just plug right in and save you a little bit of soldering. That way I'm only going to be soldering one, two connections up at the uh, the harness. All right, on the get drag, it's going to be on the left side. That's your reverse light switch. And then on the ZF, straddling the transmission again. Uh, it's right there on the right side. So hopefully this is long enough. Um, if not, I may need to extend that. We'll see. All right. So looking at... <clears throat> this is the main pigtail that goes into the automatic control shift module. And you can see right here, green, white. And then right next to it, that's the blue, yellow. So... Looking at the end of the switch, you see the blank at the top right corner, and it's the next two to the left of that is what we're trying to bridge. So I'll snip that on the back side of this, and then um, just solder that together. Now I'll take care of the reverse light. Alright, so I just ended up putting a couple of blade type connectors on my wiring harness and that will join up to these two cables here off the uh, transmission shifter um, once I get the transmission in and see that the cable is long enough I'll uh, connect those together and put some shrink tube over that and I routed that through one of these mounting holes for the automatic shifter I was thinking about using this one back here but uh, if you look on the underside, that's right where the rear bushing for the manual shift linkage is. So one of these offset ones will probably do better for you. All right, so now moving on to the neutral safety switch and doing a little digging into the wiring schematics for that. It is part of the cruise control module uh, wiring, which makes sense because you want the cruise control to disengage if you uh, depress the clutch, otherwise. Uh, the engine will accelerate once you depress the clutch. Anyway, <clears throat> as you can see here, if that can focus, there's two different wiring sets there. One for a clutch switch and one for a jumper plug. So the jumper plug is going to be with, as it says right there, with the electronic gear shifter. So that's when you have the automatic installed, there's going to be a jumper plug over that. And then uh, with out electronic gear shifter uh, you got the clutch switch and you're looking for the red blue or blue red wire and then the blue brown exiting that so the next step is going to be to remove the clutch pedal or clutch and brake pedal assembly and we're going to look at those electrical switches underneath there all right so there you can see our pedals and you're going to need to get some access to uh, the actual mounting brackets for that. So all I'm going to do is going to remove this panel here. There's some additional shrouding there that'll come out, and I believe above this is another like a knee guard for impact purposes, uh, which that may also need to come out. So remove that. All right. So here's what the uh, beauty cover is removed. You can see here's that uh, knee impact uh, box. I was talking about and it's held in place by some 10 millimeter screws you can see you could probably get access to underneath there 
Um, but removing it is just going to make the access so much easier. And it's only a handful of bolts, so we'll go ahead and remove that next. Alright, sorry about the shadow in here, but lights are necessary. So, now you can see that this really opens up the, uh, the work area. And this right here, this is the pedal box that I'm talking about. So that's where the brake pedal... And it's it's the same bracket that's on the manual cars. And this over here is the provisions for manual uh, clutch pedal. So this one looks like it's in better shape than the one I got out of the junkyard. So I'll probably just end up transferring everything over to that. And this is self simply attached by these four bolts here. Uh, and then you can see here the access point for... This is where the, the clutch hydraulic line goes down to the slave cylinder. And this is where the line comes in right here. Uh for the line that goes to the reservoir, the brake booster reservoir. And then this here, there's the clutch pedal stop that goes there. Um, I don't know if that's actually it or if that's just in place of the one off the sea. I think the actual clutch pedal stop has a rubber uh, bumper on it. So we'll go ahead and remove these four bolts next and then you have to disconnect right here where this uh, cylinder connects to the brake pedal and that whole assembly will just pull right out and then we'll take a look at the wiring all right here's the two pedal boxes side by side this one on the right is the automatic you can see it's got a bigger brake pedal and then this one on the left is the manual transmission with the clutch and brake all on the same pin there um, I don't think that either one of these is better than the other as far as condition goes so I might just clean up this one from the, the salvage car and then just reassemble the, the switches and everything so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll take a look at the wiring alright here's the manual transmission pedal box assembly complete uh, it just took me a minute to figure out how it all went back together because when I was tearing it out of the, the donor car I was just focused on getting it out of there quick um, Here's a little close-up of how everything is stacked up. There is really only one way it goes together for all the sensors to hit the stops as required. And then uh, where there appear to be spring locations and all that. So I don't want to say you can't mess this up, but uh, there's definitely a, an assembly process here that's that looks like it's logical. All right. So with this manual trans... Uh, pedal box that I pulled out of the car there's three sensors on it looks like the one for the brake pedal is the same from the automatic so I just left that in there there is another whole nother sensor which I'm not sure what it's for I did snip its harness uh, when I pulled that so I just have to trace down those wire sets and see what those actually do and then uh, here is the pigtail for the clutch depressed sensor. So with my car, oops, let me take that pigtail with me. There is actually a wire already dangling right here up on the left side with a yellow connector on it. And that's the same color wire. So Looks like the clutch uh, position switch is already ready to go. I just need to plug that in and then I'll have to figure out where those other three wires go. Anyway, looks like it'll be a fairly easy install. So this is just going to go back in there and I removed the plugs for this is where the line goes down to the slave cylinder and then right here is where the lot feed line comes from the the back side of your brake booster reservoir all right uh, on to the next uh, getting the pedal box back in and then all right I got a handle on two switches so the one that is in the currently wired in the vehicle with the violet white looks like it may be brown black and then just brown is going to be for the cruise control interrupt and then this sensor here is the one that's for uh, starting neutral so here's the wiring diagram for that one uh, same 
configuration here uh, looks like for without electronic gear shift which is a manual we've got the violet white round to ground blue black signal and then it's the same uh, it's a green gray going into the automatic range select switch and brown black out and that is feeding the electronic immobilizer control unit so we'll take a look and see where those are connected they should be just on that harness that we spliced into for the reverse lights all right so pell box is now installed with all provisions uh that spring there is a little bit wore out i may end up replacing that and then i wired the switches the one that was available i plugged in and then the uh clutch switch for the um shoot the transmission or the uh cruise control i wired that to the harness that plugged into the automatic shifter using a couple spliced wires and i grounded the one to the dashboard frame there so that'll all tuck up real nice and then the only thing left is going to be to connect the master cylinder and the supply line from the brake clutch or the brake booster once i get the transmission out the automatic will be a little bit more room to finagle the hydraulic line so that'll be where we go next now is to drop the auto all right good morning everyone Q here day three of this transmission saga uh, I just kinda got wrapped up in things so I forgot to scratch out some things so I got the the current automatic transmission out so we can cross that off we got the pedal box and the wiring done and uh, next, I gotta finish up plumbing the hydraulics, so we'll take a quick look at that. But before we do, uh, I got a couple things that, or differences I want to show uh, that just kind of tell you why you need to make sure you're looking for the right parts. So there's not a huge deal here. There's this dust shield that goes between the transmission and the engine, and you can see here on the automatic one, we've got that access port for the flywheel slash torque converter bolts that was hard to say and uh the manual transmission does not have that so there's no cutout there but realistically uh, i stacked them on top of one another uh, obviously they're gonna have the same diameter and, and mounting holes and all that stuff like that so you could probably just reuse the automatic one if you wanted to if you didn't get that with whatever parts you uh, put together just make sure you put that uh, dust boot back in there so you don't get a bunch of road grime and and whatever else water who knows what from puddles splashing into where your flywheel and clutch is because uh, you don't want that all right next thing the automatic transmission does not have a pilot bearing in the back end of the crankshaft it has this little bushing on here that's uh, integrated into the torque converter so you will need to purchase a clutch pilot bearing that gets pressed into the back of the crankshaft and that's where the input shaft of the transmission uh, engages to keep it centered uh, when you're depressing the clutch and stuff so minor oversight on my part um, just went and grabbed one from the auto parts store for like 20 bucks but not the easiest to do when your car doesn't have a transmission, so I had to rely on some two-wheel traffic. But anyway, the support bushing, or sorry, cross member at the rear of the transmission, there's the automatic, here's the manual, side by side. Um, I think, just the way I'm looking at it here, this will probably get installed in this direction compared to the automatic one. Just because where the, the mounting points of the manual transmission are a little bit forward and that'll move those forward and it's still offset like it is on the automatic one but there is a bigger spread on those attachment points between the automatic and manual. <clears throat> Alright next the drive shafts in the back the automatic and then this one in the foreground is the manual transmission one. You can see the shaft in the back roughly the same. The difference is on the portion that goes to the 
the transmission itself as you recall seeing in my video the the back end of the automatic transmission housing is quite a bit longer than the manual all right moving on to the clutch all right the hydraulic line number one um, that's coming from the master cylinder just the bottom side of the the, the boost uh, the brake booster here there's the access port that comes down through there the best way I could see to route it is underneath the steering column because what you're trying to get to is it's kind of shadowed there but uh, there's a bracket on the side of the uh, engine like bell housing area on the on the body side and that's what you're trying to get to because that's a nice support area and that is also where the the flex hose integrates that goes from the body side to the transmission uh, to the clutch slave cylinder and how that is assembled is all right you got that hard line coming from the master cylinder that goes through that bracket there's this retaining clip that goes on there and that keeps it centered on that bracket this flex line then goes to the slave cylinder so that's the two parts that go between the master and the slave and then there's also a third hose that goes from the brake fluid reservoir down to the master cylinder as a supply line. I just picked this up uh, two feet of it from the auto parts store. It's 5 16 or 7.93 millimeters, which is, it appears to be what came uh, in the vehicle. So this attaches, you'll see. Shed a little light on that. On the back of the brake booster, you see this barb right here. You just need to clip off the end of that, and then that tube will slip right over that. And then there's a second uh, axis hole on the back side. Just uh, I think it's up and to the left of where the uh, the main line comes from the master cylinder down to the slave. There's another hole in the firewall there, and that is covered up with this grommet and that hose goes through it. I just got that from the donor vehicle. So you may or may not have that. 